So if you didn't already know, Blender already has a great way to take a mesh and turn it into blocks, which is called voxelization using the remesh modifier. You just select blocks and voila, any mesh you've ever created can be turned into blocks. Um, however, uh, we do not have a equivalently easy method to turn an object into spheres, which is useful because maybe you want to turn something into buckyballs or you want to do other kinds of particle-y type of effect. Either way, there's reason to do this, uh, but not a super obvious method. So let me show you how I uh, take a mesh and turn it into spheres. So um, I'm going to be using Blender version 3.0 alpha. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to start off by making a mesh. Um, in my case, I'm just going to be using the monkey since I didn't prepare, you know, a, a much cooler like Transformers mesh for this. Either way, uh, we're going to take the monkey and turn it into spheres. We're actually going to go to the particle tab to do this. We have to do it with uh, particles because geometry nodes doesn't have volume point distribute yet. Distribute yet. Uh, either way, uh, create a particle system. Uh, before we actually like choose things for our particles, as you can see, they already exist. Um, I just want to take a care of a couple of things. First of all, um, in the viewport, I don't want to see my actual emitter, which is the mesh. I just want to see the particles. So disable show emitter and for the render, make sure to do the same thing so that when you render it, you don't see the monkey. Um, next, I want all my particles to exist immediately on frame one. So they should all spawn on frame one to one and have a lifetime of whatever the project is. This just means that all the particles exist at once and they're not gonna be deleted um, until frame 250, which is the project out point. Um, next, what we need to do is uh, make sure that these particles are arranged in a grid the way we would expect. Uh, you do this by going to the particle source. Uh, you say, where do you want it to emit from? From the inside, the volume. So kind of like the, the space within. Uh, pick volume and then pick a grid distribution. Um, and you can see it's already doing a pretty good job at... Uh, distributing points in a grid-like fashion. Um, however, uh, these still have physics and they're not objects and there's a couple things to fix. So uh, first of all, for the physics, I'm going to select none so that they just freeze there and exist and you know move with the mesh and everything. Um, to make them visible, uh, create a sphere or whatever object it is that you wanna instance. Either way, uh, I'm gonna pick a sphere. And then for my particles, uh, how I want them to show up in the render is I'm just gonna set this to object that means every particle hey uh, reference an object which one this one and you can see uh, now our uh, monkey is composed of a bunch of spheres now uh, you have two options you can either uh, make your spheres bigger so that they connect right uh, the way they would or um, if you want them again to connect you can increase uh, the grid count either way uh, i'm just going to make this a denser mesh so i'm going to make it like a 40 of voxelization, which means I need to make them smaller. So this is kind of the pain with doing the particle um, approach. You have to keep adjusting it, but whatever. Um, you can see uh, this is a great way uh, to turn our mesh into spheres and we can rotate it, move it, whatever. Uh, let's see what this looks like in rendered mode. Probably easiest to see this in cycles uh, using the GPU. It's not easier to see it using the GPU. It just doesn't make my computer want to jump off a building, uh, which is good because my computer doesn't have uh, insurance against that. So it would just kind of suffer the consequences. Um, either way, uh, you can see our mesh is made out of uh, sphere primitives. And, you know, if you wanted to do a bunch of stuff with this, and I, I guess I should just mention this. So um, if you want to do anything with this, like, you know, change the material, whatever, uh, you might think that you're going to select the monkey. Once it shows up, you might think you're going to select the monkey and like change the material. Uh, that's not the case. Um, this monkey now doesn't exist. It's just a bunch of particles. So if you want to change something, you have to change the original particle. So what I mean by this is select the sphere, the object that we instanced. And uh, here is where we change it. So since now we're changing the color of this sphere, which gets copied over, etc. Um, but again, uh, since we're doing particle workflow, there's a couple advantages. Like we get this particle info node, so we can uh, uh, take advantage of some of these, like the random, just connect that to the base color. And boop, you've got, uh, you know, this made out of whatever. Uh, you can take advantage of all these things. <laughs> um, to make it a buckyball, since that's kind of the thing I was going for, I'm just gonna make it a metal material. I'm gonna make it a bit shinier, and I'm gonna make sure to make this shade smooth so that's nice and shiny. And you can see, uh, now we've kind of created a mesh out of buckyballs. 
and you can apply this again to any uh, more complicated mesh. So uh, there you go. You now know how to make a thing out of spheres. Um, I don't know how many people wanted this tutorial, but it exists. Um, I just want to mention uh, super quickly, uh, Patreon exists. I'm, I usually show all the names. I'm not going to do it this time since it's a short tutorial. It's a great place to get tutorials early, exclusive tutorials I don't post on either this channel or the CG Matter channel, and also uh, the bunt file uh, for, you know, any project I've ever made. So Patreon exists, and um, I hope you learned something about making your mesh spherical. There you go.